Hello, everybody, and welcome to day 46 of Virtual English 2. And no, I am not a hobo that has been sleeping inside my classroom for the past three days. I just recorded these all on Monday. If there's new information, I'll splice it in somehow all ninja-like. So on Monday, I covered, with you, I covered with you what critical approaches to literature are. There are three particular critical approaches that we're focusing on for this unit. The reader response approaches, which you, the reader, takes away from the text. There are three elements to the reader response. Of course, there is you, the reader, your reading situation, and the text. And so two of those can change quite often. The text usually stays the same. It's a constant variable. The other two change. And so the meaning that you pull away from that text will be different each time. Like as you get older, you're a different person. And if you interact with the text, you'll get different things out of it. People always ask me like how as an English teacher, I can constantly like keep reading the same text over and over again. And partly it's because of the reader response. I'm a different person each time I read it. And the other part is these other approaches such as the sociological approach. So with the sociological approach, you're looking at how the text is acting like a mirror for society. What does the text have to say about society as a whole? And there's a variety of different ways that we can look at it. And once again, you can kind of like, uh, even if the text doesn't outright talk about it, it's called reading against the text, seeing on the other side of that mirror uh, why, that, why someone was not included or why a group was not included with the text. That's what we're kind of looking at for that particular one. And then, of course, you have the archetypical approach, which is basically to symbol hunting. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be looking at the lottery through these different approaches. Now, yesterday I asked you to read the lottery by Shirley Jackson. In fact, here we go, the lottery by Shirley Jackson. Don't worry about that. That's just me having my title already ready for when I copy and paste it and upload it to YouTube. So yes, yesterday I asked you to read Lottery by Shirley Jackson uh, and take 10 annotations over this short story. Uh, this some people claim is a very disturbing short story, which hey, I'm not gonna deny it kind of is. I always found it a fascinating story, uh, especially like uh, if you wanna look at one of the approaches, like if you look at it through a feminist approach or even like a socioeconomic approach, then like a lot can be read into it. Uh, that's what you did yesterday. You read The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. Now today, what I want you to do is uh, revisit The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, and I want you to answer these uh, three questions. Now, in the past, I would have you present these to the class, but I figured out how we're going to do that uh, outside of us doing another recording, and based on the amount of y'all that actually recorded your essays, I'm at least at this point at 12 o'clock on uh, Monday morning. Uh, I'm not too confident how it will go if I have y'all do that uh, on the last. Might be another to pop on here tomorrow to tell you about that would incorporate this. So here's what I want you to do, though. You have three que you have three things I want you to answer. Okay. So I want you to answer the reader response approach, the archetypical approach, and the sociological approach about the lottery by Shirley Jackson. So here's what I want you to do with the reader response approach. I just want you to tell me. How do you feel about the lottery? In fact, I'd recommend this be the first one you kind of look, look at because it's the most fresh one that you'd have. So how do you feel about the lottery? What do you think the lottery means just in general from your first reading of it? And why, why, what do you think the overall message, the main idea or the theme of the lottery is? Okay, so what do you think about the lottery? What do you think it's trying to tell us? And what do you think the overall message, the main idea the theme of the lottery is so what's the big idea that what's the big idea that this story is trying to talk to us about then the architect then i want you to do the archetypical approach so with the archetypical approach let me pull up this real fast so this p this uh, pdf that i have right here that will be attached to the assignment right here as it loads and i then share it so what i want you to do is i want you to take this pdf and kind of find some some possible archetypes that story talks about. They do exist. The story does have a little situational archetype. There is a character. There's a couple character archetypes that the story has, and this story has a whole host of symbols that you could possibly dive into. So what I'm wanting you to do for the archetypical approach is once I got everything pulled up, there we go. Is what I want you to do. Is what is an archetype the lottery uses? So I want you to find the archetypes that the lottery uses 
and establish here's how they use it. So how is this type archetype being used? So you're going to say, this is an archetype the lottery, the lottery uses. Here's how the, the lottery uses this archetype. And then how does this archetype affect the overall message? So how does the archetype that you chose help impact the uh, main idea or the theme that the lottery is trying to get across to us, the bigger idea that the lottery is trying to tell us about? Then last but not least, I want you to do the sociological approach. So I want you to pick one of the seven sociological lenses. Uh, if you do not remember what those are, they are as follows. Let me down, open up another thing. This one will take a little bit longer because it's a uh, it's a PowerPoint that I'm having to open up for you. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead while here and there we go. So I'm going to share my screen. You're going to pick one of these seven sociological. In fact, I am going to go ahead and print just that one slide, selected slide, and I'm going to save it. PDF. You're watching me. You're watching the song being made right now. So let's see. approaches. There we go. Fitting YouTubing, I know. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick one of these seven. You don't, Now, once again, I want to highlight that I'm not forcing you to pick any one input. You are free to pick whichever one of these seven you want to pick. Okay. So you could do gender. I would say gender and socioeconomic status is the low hanging fruit here. Uh, race would be an interesting one. Uh, they don't outright say race, but we can all kind of assume based on the last names what race these people are. Uh, religion, same thing with religion. Uh, they don't outright talk about religion, but we can kind of assume in a religion they might possibly be worshiping. Keep in mind, what a lottery in June, corn be heavy soon. That's the highlight to explain to you why uh, they do what they do. And then uh, age, age is, an, uh, age is a really easy one that you could possibly latch onto. You could look at the, the school age kids, old man is a bit really interesting thing you could look at through uh, age with this. Ability, different, uh, uh, different, uh, different disabilities. You no, know, uh, like look at the, old, the man that uh, couldn't uh, draw for his family, be a possible ability, disability one that you could look at and then so sexual orientation be another one that you could look at. So what I'm wanting you to do with this one is pick one of those seven. And then let's go back over here. So you're going to pick one of the sociological lenses and explain how this lens is and or explored. So how is this lens, how does the story look at gender? How does the story look at socioeconomic status? How does it look at race or how it doesn't do that? Uh, is this is this making one group seem superior to another group? So is it making one group seem better than another group? Why or why not? Uh, what do you believe the author's trying to tell us about your lens? So what do you think the author's trying to tell us about race? What do you think that the author's trying to tell us about sexual orientation if you choose one of those ones? You don't have to, though. You don't have to choose that particular lens. It's an option for you if you want to go with it, but you don't have to choose it if you don't want to. And then, do you agree with what the authors tell us? Why or why not? So let's go through all this one more time. So you're answering, there. this is a 15-point assignment. There are three particular sections that I'm wanting you to answer. The first one is the reader response. How do you feel about the lottery? What do you think it, what do you think it means? And what do you think your overall, what do you think the overall message of the slash main idea slash theme of the lottery is? So the first one's kind of your opinion, but you got to use kind of evidence from the story to kind of help explain explain why you feel that way. The second one is archetypical, where you're taught you're going to identify an archetype that the lottery uses, explain how they use it, and explain how that apply, appeals to the bigger idea. And then the last one is the sociological approach. We're going to pick one of the seven lenses, uh, gender, uh, socioeconomic status, uh, religion, uh, sexual orientation, ability, age and race you're gonna pick one of those seven and you're going to give me examples of how that that social not gonna uh, the, that sociological lens is or isn't being explored in the text and is one group being seen as superior to another group why or why not and what do you believe the author was trying to tell us about your lens and do you agree or disagree with the uh, uh, author why or 
So there you go. That's what I need. That's what you're going to be doing, answering those questions over it. I'll give you a couple days to do this because it's way to your one. I do recommend you dive in and kind of reread it with different perspectives. The first time you read it, read a response. It's perfectly fine. Second time, kind of read through it and symbol hunt for a little bit. And then the third time, read through it and look at it from a sociological perspective. If we were traditional face-to-face, -face, we'd be doing this kind of in groups, but that makes it a little bit more difficult to do. So right now we're just kind of doing it independently and we might share our findings in a group setting uh, later. I don't know. We'll just figure that out. Maybe that's what we'll do. I'll hop on and talk to you about tomorrow. That's all I got for you. Uh, this is what, I'm going to give you a couple of days to work on this. So it's not due to do tomorrow. It's going to be due a couple of days from now. All right. So I will see y'all. In fact, you can see what the due date is above, you know, on the last page above me. Okay. If you have any questions, email me, pdavidson at portishill.k12.mo.us. Like, subscribe, you know, hashtag yellow uh, swag, you know, whatevs, whatever you kids use on the YouTubes. Bye. Anyway, if you have any questions, email me. Bye.